In this video, we're going to see how we can group dates together. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So we've got on screen some dates and some values going from December 2022 through to January 2024. Now, if you want to do this as a practice activity, then this information is in the description to this activity. So what I would like is the ability to group this together so that they are in quarters. So we have together January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, and October, November, December. Notice that not all of these months are included in this sample data. And then once you've done that, can you change it so that we can group it not every three months, but every two months or every four months? So if you're going to do that, Good luck, pause the video here. So let's see how we can do this. So first of all, we've got an invoice date. An invoice date has a year and it has a month. So let's get the year from it. So I'll just put year of invoice date and month of invoice date. Now it's going to come up with no headings because this is a calculation. So I'm going to say as date year and as date month. So let's see what we get from that. And now we can see that we've broken it down into a year and a month. Well, let's add the quarter. So let's put in quarter of invoice date as date quarter and see where that gets us. And that gets us into an error because quarter is not a recognized built-in function name. So how else can we extract information from dates data? And another way is by using date part. So date part allows me to extract various things. It could be year, could be month. And in this case, it could be quarter. So I'm going to extract the quarter. And you can see I could have just written a Q, I could write a QQ, but I actually prefer writing it longhand like quarter. But they all do the same thing. So let's execute this. And there we can see we now have a quarter. So we have quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. So next we need to group them together. So I don't, in this case, want the date month, though I will be coming back to it later on. So I've got here the year, the quarter. I don't want the date in the final version, so I will comment that out. And incidentally, if you're wondering why I have the comma at the beginning, it's so I can do this more easily. I can comment out the comma as well as this. Whereas if I had it at the other way, so I have invoice date and comma like that, that would work. But if I wanted to comment out this final thing, it suddenly stops working. We have a spare comma. Whereas if I do it the other way, then I can comment out whatever I want and it just allows me to do it for a particular line, no problems. So having commented out two of these fields, I now have the date year, date quarter and invoice amount. So what I want to do now is to group by these. So group by the year of the invoice date and the date part, the quarter. So what I've got to do now is change this to an aggregation because if I don't, I will find that it is invalid because it's not part of an aggregate or a group by. So I'm going to now put a sum around that and this will be the total invoice amount. So let's run that and we can now see that they are grouped. Not in the right order though, we have 2022 much further down than it should be. So we need an order by. Now I can either order by this or because in the order by I'm allowed to order by these aliases, I can say order by date year and date quarter. So both are fine. So have I done it correctly? Well, I'm just going to put a select star from invoices and we can see that we have a total of 15, for instance, in the second quarter of 2023. So that is these five rows added up. So two, four, nine, 12, 15. You can see it adds up correctly. 
Right. So now the next question is, well, suppose I didn't want these two to be in separate fields. Suppose I want them in the one column. Well, I can do that. Let's get rid of month for now. I could just put a plus in between. However, this will not work as you might imagine. Now it's saying there's an error. That's because I've still got this alias. So it looks like it should work. So let's get rid of this date quarter down here as well. Unfortunately, it adds everything together. So the year 2022 and the quarter is four, that gets added together to make 2026. It's not quite working as you might expect. So what I need to do is convert these or cast them into a string. So I could say convert this into a varchar four and then convert this also into a varchar four. And now because they are both text, if I run this, I get much closer. 2022, four, 2023, one. So I need something in the middle, like for instance, the letter Q. So if I run that, then now we have 2022, Q4, 2023, Q1. So this answers the question, how are we going to do this? The grouping together of dates into quarters. Now suppose we wanted a bit more flexibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo a fair bit and have these in two separate columns again. So we don't need to convert it or anything like that. There we go. Suppose I didn't want it to be every quarter. Suppose I wanted it to be every four months. Well, there isn't a date part that allows me to extract four months. What we do have instead is month. So if I go back to month again, you can see that if I put it into the group by, we now have the individual months. What I want is for these to be the number one, these to be the number two, these to be the number three. So I could use a case. So a case when it's one, when it's two, when it's three, then give me a one, for instance. However, what I can also do is divide this by three. Now I'm just going to copy this and divide it by three. And you'll see it doesn't quite work. So when we have a month two, and I'll just rename this as month to be clearer and change this column at the bottom. When we have a month two, then it gives me a quarter of zero. When we have a month three, it gives me a quarter of one. So these are being grouped together. So what I need to do is to add two to the month. So month one would then become month three. Month two would become month four. Month three would become month five. And so when you divide three, four or five by three, you get the answer one. Notice it doesn't give you 1.3333 because we are using integer maths. So if I add two to this, now they are being grouped in the correct place. So I can use this to group not by every three months, but every four months. So I change this by dividing by four and I change this by adding three. So that month one becomes month four and four divided by four is one. So this now groups it all together. So what I want to do eventually is get rid of this date month and then change this group by so that it is grouping by this and the same in the order by. So these now are no longer technically quarters. I'll just call them date period perhaps to make it more reflective of what it finally is. So we have 2023 period one, 2023 period two, 2023 period three and so on. So if I wanted to group it every six months, then I'll be doing this. So every half year, again, I need to make sure that my group by is similarly updated. If I want to group it by every two months, then I would do this. 
So in this video, we've taken some date data and we have grouped it together. So we've grouped it by quarter. So you can either have two separate columns for this, or if you use convert or cast to convert them into a var char, for instance, you can combine them together into one column. And then we also changed it so it wasn't every three months, but every four months, every six months, and every two months. Well, thank you very much for watching this. If you liked it, then why not click on the like and then subscribe and click that bell so you get notified of any new videos. And if you want more practice activities, then why not have a look at my practice activity playlist. Thank you very much for watching this. Please have a look at my website, idodata.com, if you'd like to see any of my courses. Please go to my website, idodata.com, for a complete list of all of my Udemy courses for SQL, Azure, Office, and more. Thank you very much for watching this, and keep learning.